are about to discover the basics of an effective way to keep your business on track with finances. So Jane can actually make the financials look pretty. So Jane is a small business advisor supporting clients in the New England region from Armidale and north to the Queensland border. Jane brings a wealth of knowledge, particularly to the rural sector of the community, having previously worked for New South Wales Agriculture in the area of farm finance and business management. So Jane has a long history of working with regional businesses and a patient to support rural communities to remain strong and viable. So if you want to contact Jane to make an appointment, call the BEC at 6771 2556 or email her at mybusiness at bc.com.au. So Jane is about to bring you a fresh and up-to-date approach and present the information in an easy-to-understand manner. Okay, over to you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Murray. Bookkeeping is often the bane of any small business operator. But it doesn't have to be if basic systems are put in place and the process to manage the system is consistent. I will try to demystify the bookkeeping process for you the trick is, keep it simple. It is a given that all small business operators are time poor. However, if you are to be successful in business, you need to be a good manager. So while you may be good at the doing production side of the business, for some reason you balk at the business side and cash flow is integral to the sustainability of your business. Money into the business for goods and services needs money out of the business to support the delivery of these goods and services. Therefore, we need to have paper trails to recall all of this and it is a requirement of the tax office. So I'm going to talk you through how to do this. An in tray for all paperwork pertinent to the business dealt with in a timely manner, say weekly, depending on the type of business, maybe fortnightly, maybe monthly. Then you need to collate the appropriate section of management, be it the accounts payable, whether it's the ordering or it's the marketing of the business. The filing system that may be the floor of the ute or the glove box can lead to accounts being misplaced. It's good practice to bring them all into an in-tray or a box at least weekly, if not daily. It's often the cause of marriage breakdowns. <laughs> so it's imperative to create a system that's consistently managed in a timely manner. By this I mean sit down at a designated workstation and go through um, the in-tray sorting into appropriate piles to deal with it. To make this work with, for you, you will need some tools and I would like to suggest that the most efficient manner to deal with accounts is to file in monthly order and not alphabetically. If you need to provide information to a third party, it's much easier to pick up a ring binder folder with all financial records filed in date order with the reconciled bank statement on the top of the monthly file. So gather together the tools you will need, starting with a basket or a drawer to hold all the bits and pieces you will need at your fingertips to complete the task you've set. This includes the ring binder folder to hold 12 months worth of records with monthly dividers, pen and pencil, rubber, working stapler, calculator and scrap paper. Chart of accounts which is all the possible out items listed that relate to your business, categorised in 
into an appropriate order and usually given a code which can come from your accountant or from a specific software program suited to the type of business you are in. You will also need your invoice and receipt book, wages records and your bank statements. The process is to sit down with all the assembled tools and sort through these accounts to pay. Code them according to the category number from your chart of account. Let's look at an example from a stationery supply store. We have a docket for pencils and pens, a ream of paper for the printer, ink for the printer and an invoice book. So these could be coded under office supplies as the category heading and broken down into stationery, consumables and computer requisites as the subheadings of this category would be found halfway down the list of on the expenses side of the list. Assign the category number to the docket page and the subletter or code to each item. Then hole punch and place it into the folder for the first account of the month. Work. So up here we have the code of 50 which is office supplies and then broken down into stationary consumables and station and computer requisites. Work through the paper file till all the invoices are coded and don't forget the income statements also. Once this process is complete, it's time to either turn on the computer or get out the manual ledger to record this information in the right format. Again, work through the accounts, entering them onto your system in consecutive order and allocating the dollars under each subcategory. There are industry specific, <laughs> there are industry specific financial software packages available for all industries including retail, trades, hair and beauty, and agriculture. If you would like to go down this track or tap into readily available commercial programs such as Myob, QuickBooks or Xero that would work for your business. If you are a small owner operating a business with not a large turnover, you may like to look at some of the tools available in the Microsoft Office suite of programs. However, it is convenient and time saving to have an integrated software program that can generate reports as to the state of the business at the press of a button. A chart of accounts is a simple term refer referring to a listing of ledger accounts used within the business and can be recorded alphabetically, numerically or alphanumerically or any consistent approach that the business chooses to implement. Another term you may have heard is category coding which is the same thing. A list of headings and subheadings under which income and expenditure for the business is allocated and there are basically two types of accounts which are the balance sheet accounts and the bank accounts. On the screen you can see a bit of a diagram, I don't know how clear it will be for you, that lists this concept. The screen that is currently in view has flowcharts to demonstrate the different sections that form a chart of accounts. 
it's really important to set the process up in a manner that is easy for the operator to understand. So take the time to think this through. It will become your Bible as far as account management is concerned. It is logical to put your income sources at the beginning or top of the page, followed by the cost related to the generation of this income. And then the overhead expenses. Those are the ones that are always there, regardless of whatever your income streams are. If you are a sole trader with a small turnover, you may be able to set this up for yourself. Or you may like to engage with your accountant to streamline the process to be compatible with their specific programs. However, it is important that it becomes straightforward for the operator to understand and simple to manage. You want to be able to get out of it the reports that tell you where your business is at at any given time. A reconciliation that I mentioned earlier <coughs> is the process of checking off all the transactions against those listed on the bank and credit card statements. In order for this to happen, accounts need to be ticked off on both the bank statement and the ledger record. And the extra ones from the bank statement added so that the closing balance at the bottom of the bank statement is also the closing balance at the bottom of that month's ledger account. By undertaking this process thoroughly at the end of each month, you are taking more control of operating your business and are then able to generate monthly reports that identify exactly how your business is tracking. And this can be can checked off against the budget so you know if you are meeting your set targets. A word on credit card statements. They need to be fully paid at the end of each month. And all the transactions listed on the credit card statement need to be individually coded and added in for the reconciliation process. Many of them would be claimable business expenses and their inclusion provides a much more realistic cost of operating the business. It would be a better practice to look into doing away with credit cards and use a debit card where the money comes straight from your bank account and this facility has no minimum cost as opposed to a credit card facility fee. If your business requires more details, if you have a variety of products and services on offer, you may need to also allocate the transaction breakdown to more than one cost center or enterprise, so you have a third code number. You may be a cafe with a retail section, so you would want to build up knowledge of the number of coffees sold on a daily basis and some of you may even be recording if this is in the morning or the afternoon to get a picture of the service to know more about your staffing levels. What are the popular food items being ordered? And also what products are being retailed over the counter? This is a perfect way to keep an up-to-date inventory of product on the shelf and some software can be set up to trigger reordering when the levels reach a preset critical point. Be sure to research the software capabilities before you purchase so that it provides you with a level of control you are looking to achieve. If your system is efficient enough, you will be able to generate your own BAS and thus reduce an overhead accounting expense should you choose to do so. So do we have any questions? We have an opportunity um, to, there will be an opportunity to participate in ATO Tax for Small Business Workshops in April. If you are interested to further upskill, please register your interest with the BEC on 6771 2556 
or email us on mybusiness at the bc.com.au. What is a BAS? Okay. Business activity statement is what BAS stand for. Businesses who generate an income of more than 75,000 have to generate a BAS statement, usually at the end of each quarter, but it can be done at the end of each month, depending on the size of the business. The most common mistakes people make are basically the fear of having to sit down and organise their bank banking details to organise how their accounts fall into the different categories. So it's understanding what the categories are and how they work within the individual business. It's understanding what the expenses and income are within the business, where you want to put the emphasis as a business owner or operator, in managing your cash flow. Should I get a bookkeeper or should I do it myself? If you are prepared to make the time and sit down and do it, it is better that you do it yourself. If you are a seven day a week sole trader, I think a bookkeeper is probably a good idea because burnout is a huge problem for small business operators. However, if you're going to engage a bookkeeper, you need to put some basics in place and it's probably good to be able to go through those dockets, tax invoices and code them up for the bookkeeper because that reduces the possibility of mistakes being made and you do have a degree of control and as the small business operator, you're the one in the hot seat. You need to be in control. We're more than happy to help someone get set up. I guess that's one of the strengths of what we do here at the BEC. So if you would like to make an appointment for one of our advisors to come and help, myself or the advisor in your area, please make contact with the BEC, 6771. Two double five six. The first two hours of any engagement with the BEC are free. After that, we do negotiate a small fee, and that is solely dependent on that business and the situation they're in. Uh, do we have some basic notes that we could send? I'd rather sit and talk with the individual. Uh, business operator because everyone has a different slant on things. I think it's a uh, better use of time management to sit and go through the individual setups required for each business. Developing a chart of accounts that is practical, logical for that particular business is the first basic step to get right. There are a number of different standard charts of accounts, but they all need to be modified. It's very rare that a chart of accounts that's already set preset in commercially available software is exactly what you want. You can cut out the ones that you don't want and you can add uh, new ones as, as you need them. That's why it's good to sit down on an individual basis and work through what, what's important for your individual business so that it's streamlined and, and logical. There are heaps of good bookkeepers out there. How do I, how do I find one? Word of mouth, research. <coughs> I'm sorry. If you have um, someone you'd like to engage with, ask them who some of their other clients are and then 
phone those other clients to get a testimonial. The same as you would when you're in employing someone. You need a bit of background information. Do I need a BAS statement? It depends on the turnover of the business. If you're under 75,000, you don't need to worry about registering for GST. Why should I pay for one? I'm assuming this is related to a bookkeeper. Again, it depends on the individual business operator's level of skill and time. If you are time poor, you probably need to think about looking at engaging a bookkeeper. Seven days a week is really difficult to be across every aspect of your business and most of those seven day a week businesses are operators who are working in the business and it's difficult to have the time to work on the business. And this aspect, bookkeeping, is working on the business. We've had some positive feedback. Um, we thank those people for that, saying that they have found this useful. Please, if you have any questions, give the BEC a call on 6771 to double five six or send us an email my business at bec .com .au. Thank you for taking the time to listen today and I hope I've provided you with something new for your business management. Thank you Jane for your knowledge. We learned a lot this morning. Um, I think we are all motivated to open our drawers, grab the tools and make our business successful. So as Jane said earlier, please feel free to call the BEC at 6771-2556 or email us at mybusiness.com.au at, uh, my at .au. if you want to make an appointment with Jane or one of our business advisors or be the first to benefit from a huge range of services tailored to your business. So you can re-watch this webinar and the previous ones 24-7 at www.bc.com.au slash view dash webinar slash. Our next one will be on the 23rd of February with Bromon Pearson from Pinnacle Solutions. Bromon will talk about HR basics for your business. So you can register by following our Facebook and Twitter pages. So last thing um, before I let you go, the BEC wants you to show some business some love. For Valentine's Day, the BEC offers a special gift to the 21st people who come and visit our office. We are situated upstairs and as arcade on Beale Street. So we are waiting for you. So with all that, um, I would like to end the webinar. Um, ah, we've got actually a new question. Jane, if you're still happy to answer the question. Thank you very much for your question and your feedback. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Maria. The um, is if I'm going to involve a bookkeeper, can you better concentrate on your business? Yes, you can, definitely. As long as you have a good, build up a good rapport with your bookkeeper, you don't want to just throw them the books and let them do it for you. It's good practice to sit down with them at the end of each month or each definitely each quarter and go through any questions if they've got some concerns because they're doing the day-to-day -day data entry for you, they will see trends within your business. So a bookkeeper can be a really valuable addition to your staff arrangement. And in that case can be really cost-effective. And from that point of view, to be 
absolutely cost effective. It's uh, good to have a review at least every quarter. Thank you, Jane. Um, I think we answered, Jane answered all the questions uh, you have. Thank you again for your feedback and your questions. That's great. Again, if you've got any question, any concern about your business, we're here to help you. So feel free to contact us and we'll be really happy to help you out. Um, so, yeah, I think we covered pretty much everything Jane wanted to talk about. So I would like to end the webinar. I wish you all a beautiful Tuesday and don't forget to follow us on our Twitter and Facebook accounts for more special offers. Thank you everyone, look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>